Hey there my gorgeous friends on internet. I am back on your internet screen and here to talk about two different topics. So let me cover the first topic that is a smaller one. So a while ago I created a video on how to create websites without code. So we used a plugin called Anima for Adobe XD and in the video I have discussed that it is not available for Figma at the moment. So now I have received a mail from Anima developers saying that the uh, plugin is available for Figma as well. So I'll leave the link in the description and in my community tab. You can go ahead and check it out. So the first topic is covered. Let's move on to the next topic that is an important one. So we are going to talk about Bootstrap 5, the first look. So Bootstrap 5 Alpha has just been released. And if you are in this industry for a while, that you know that how the software releases work. So the first release is the Alpha release. Uh, which is the first significant change from the previous version that is bootstrap 4 to 5 and then comes the beta release so in beta releases it's more about finalizing the features and testing the application and then when uh, it is tested and completely uh, free from bugs then it is released for public so uh, bootstrap 5 is at its initial moment at the uh, at the time and uh, today we will be going to see the additions and uh, updations from the previous version and then after that we will be having a hands on to how to set up bootstrap version 5 for your use. So uh, make sure you subscribe the channel because in the near future we are going to create a crash course on bootstraps version 5 and how to create an amazing thing using bootstrap version 5 when the public release comes out. So make sure you subscribe the channel if you haven't till then let's move ahead with the addition and updation that we have. Bootstrap 5 Alpha was just released and I wanted to just do a first look type of video to go over any changes and just give you an example of how you can get set up with the version 5. But this isn't going to be a full crash course or anything and rather a base for the crash course that we might create in the coming future. Because like I said it is still in alpha and there's going to be things that are added to it or removed. So today we are going to look at what's new and just create a simple login page using Bootstrap 5 and show you some of the new features. So the websites you can find everything is v5.getbootstrap.com. So if you want to mess around with it, that's a great, maybe a small simple project or something like that. But I wouldn't recommend you doing any large production project with it just because there will be some breaking changes, additions, removals, etc in the future although i don't think the jump from the version 4 to 5 will be as significant as the jump from 3 to 4 so a lot of the class names and other stuff like that will stay the same but they are going to be more available and customizable to you to use version 5 right now you can of course use the cdn although if you do it that way it is not much customizable so either you can download the source file from the website or install it with npm which is what we will be doing in a little while. So we'll set up a workflow to compile SAS and use variables and so on. So firstly, the documentation has been improved. V4's documentation was good, but they went a step ahead with V5. There's a new look and feel with more information, especially when it comes to customization. One of the issues with Bootstrap over the years is that many sites that use Bootstrap, mostly all of them look the same. Like you can immediately recognize if a website is developed with bootstrap, but in version five, they are giving more guidance about the customization and customizing your themes so that not every site looks the same. Also, they expand on version four's theming page with more content and snippets of uh, example or demo codes. So better docs, more information, better customization. The color palettes also have been expanded. You can see the difference between version 4's color palette and version 5's color palette, giving lots of colors to work with and allowing us to create variety of themes and also some good work is done to improve the color contrast. Okay, now this is a huge change but it's a best part of the version 5. So no more jQuery. So no more dependency on the jQuery libraries. You only need bootstrap CSS and JavaScript, although you still have proper JS for tooltips and some other stuffs and now having to include on jquery will help you save the uh, app size of the application you develop so the applications will be much smaller it seems that they are trying to make version 5 more future friendly 
they even dropped support for internet explorer so that they can use things like custom properties which internet explorer doesn't support and this is a good thing because internet explorer held web development back in many areas for a long period of time but not anymore so as they said one of the reasons for dropping ie is for support of css custom variables before there were only handful of root variables like colors and fonts and stuff like that in version 4 but now in version 5 they have added a bunch of uh, components and layouts options such as the table component so you can see here we are using css custom properties so the bootstrap forms component and the documentation for the forms also have been updated there is a dedicated area just for forms they have redesigned the form controls in version 4 the custom controls like radios checks switches they were in addition to whatever the default browser styles were but in version 5 They've gone a step ahead and made it a fully custom. So all the checkboxes, radios, select lists, things like that, they all have a custom appearance to unify the style and behavior across all browsers in your complete application. This is pretty nice that version 5 also has a new utility API. They've created the syntax in SAS to create your own utilities when you need so that the complete application looks uniform and easy to work with. Also, with the ability to modify, remove utilities that are already provided. This was a feature in many other CSS uh, frameworks and good to see that Bootstrap is catching it up. I'm going to show you how to do it. So this is an example of with utility. So we have the utility name, the property which is with the class to be used that is W and Bootstrap, you know, we used M hyphen phi or any other values. These are called spacer values. So this uh, was some that we that were provided in version five, but in version uh, version four, but in version five they've given it completely in our control, so we can create or modify according to our need. So you can see the values so that uh, 25 stands for 25 percent and so on. So if you write w hyphen 25, the width will be 25 percent or w dash 50, and the width will be 50 percent. So the version 5 also has an enhanced grid system. They, they kept the bulk of this uh, or the base of the system in place because of some issues in the version 3 to 4 upgrade and they built on the existing grid system instead of replacing it. So some of the changes are a new double XL tire. The gutter class has been replaced by G with spacer values like G hyphen phi or G hyphen dash like that. Vertical spacing classes are added and the columns are no longer position relative a pretty subtle changes and addition so as they didn't want to have things break so another thing that has been added in a new set of icons so bootstrap version 5 has its own very own icon library so you don't have to use something like font awesome or material icons you can use the bootstrap icons which are svgs so they scale up and down quickly and easily you can install them using npm so we will take a look at that as well all right so i think all in all there are some good changes and additions although i haven't looked at every single component and remember that things are still going to be added as this is still in alpha and it is alpha one so this was its first look now we will have a hands-on to the new version 5 in the next video now that you have seen the changes, you might be excited about getting your hands on with the version 5 and creating your own little project. So in the next video, we will be having our hands on and creating a setup of version 5 and create a little login page with all the new features that we have seen. So that's it for today's video. Make sure you like the video. And as I have seen from the analytics, 75% of my viewers are unsubscribed. So make sure you subscribe the channel because the number gives us the motivation and we can give it back to you in form of such an amazing content. So now uh, we have reached the end of our internet time together. So we'll be back with a new video soon. Till then, peace out.